Dawn Staley and South Carolina have arrived at the Sweet 16. Third time in the last four years they've had to travel west, which has not been kind to the Gamecocks, but they do have arguably the best player in this region. Aja Wilson, two-time SEC Player of the Year. The opponent, a school from Connecticut. It may not be the school from Connecticut, but 12 seed Quinnipiac has America's attention with its first trip to the regional semifinals. Welcome to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. From Stockton Arena in Stockton, California, about an hour south of Sacramento, the four teams in this bracket, all self-made programs. Quinnipiac with its first two NCAA tournament wins in school history. South Carolina as a one seed, fourth straight year to the Sweet 16, but only one trip to the Final Four, that was two years ago. Also Florida State and Oregon State in this bracket. And how about Oregon, already a double digit seed, moving on to the Elite Eight with a win against Maryland, and will face off with the number one team in the country, Connecticut, on Monday night. Alongside LaChina Robinson, I'm Dave Pash. Molly McGrath will join us in a bit. And LaChina, no 12-seater higher has ever won a regional semifinal. And South Carolina is shorthanded. Elena Coates will not play in the NCAA tournament. Alicia Gray injured in the second round. She's supposed to play today. But even if she's ineffective, Asia Wilson can take over a game. Yeah, in the NCAA tournament, we talk a lot about the importance of guard play. But Asia Wilson at 6'5 can score on the low block. She provides rebounding. Her shot blocking on the defensive end, and she has an infectious energy late in game that has helped her team survive in advance. All right, LaChana, what about Quinnipiac? What will it take to move on to the next round and make history? Well, Quinnipiac is a Cinderella team to us, but in that locker room, they believe the only thing Cinderella about them is their seed, David. They have played like a team on a mission. Into the locker room, head coach Trisha Fabry. Go hunt your shot. Continue to play great basketball together. Continue to make that play going forward. Continue to know where your teammate is and continue to drill. Stay in attack mode. Who's going to win? We are. Let's go, Blue. Come on. Now. One, two, three. Now. And with more on the Cinderella story, here's Molly McGrath. a better prop, Molly with the Quinnipiac boxing glove, or Gina Oriema wearing the Quinnipiac t-shirt at a press conference yesterday. All right, our Capital One starting lineups. This is a school from Hamden, Connecticut, but they have just one player that starts that's from Connecticut. That's Martucci. You have Stroudman from Latvia, Thornton from Ireland. And for South Carolina, Kayla Davis coming off a 20-point game against Arizona State in the second round. Carolina was down in the fourth quarter, stormed back to beat the Sun Devils. They have a true freshman point guard, Taisha Harris, who played well in the first two rounds. We'll see how she handles this environment here in the Sweet 16. They go to Wilson in the first play. It's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay here. Man-to-man -man defense right away by Quinnipiac. They believe that if they can keep Asia Wilson from being effective in the paint, they have a good chance of winning this game. I think they had a clock issue. That's why they have not resumed play yet. There's Don Staley, the Hall of Famer, also the head coach now of USA Basketball, the women's national team, the 15th head coach, and the first African-American head coach for the women's team. And here's Davis down the lane, missed the layup. Winnie Piat won 29 games this season, champions of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference, their third straight regular season title. They beat Marquette and Miami to get to this point. Wilson with a face-up jumper, and it spins out. An offensive rebound. And the putback. 
Alicia Gray, that look, looks okay so far. Alicia Gray playing the power forward in this small lineup for South Carolina. She is often in position to offensive rebound because of the attention that Aja Wilson receives. Good ball movement. Stroutman off on the three-point try, though. And Gray, who's had 20 rebounds so far in this championship, pulls that one down. And you got to get a hand up when Davis shoots that. The defender did not, and it's good for three-point range. Kayla Davis has found her stroke towards the end of the regular season into the NCAA tournament. She's a great complement for South Carolina's offense. Now that they're missing Atlanta coach, they need that X factor. Now, speaking of coach, she injured her ankle in mid-February, tried to come back, just couldn't go, and has not played so far and will not if South Carolina advances. And you see Quinnipiac likes to spread the floor on the offensive end. They'll set a lot of screens. Good offensive balance for them. Faye with the rebound off the Harris miss. Here's McClure. Just had a miss shot. Stroutman A for three. Rattles out. Only made nine threes all year and attempted two already in this game. Quinnipiac got here with their ability to hit shots at the right time. They found balance. They've had big scoring. They will need that against the Gamecocks. Wilson fouled on the putback attempt, and she'll go to the line. There's a size advantage for Kayla Davis at 6'2 on the perimeter. So good screen there by Wilson. The defense collapses in just a little bit, and that allows enough space for Kayla Davis to hit that shot. And that's an important compliment to open up the interior for Wilson. Davis shooting 34% from three on the year, and Wilson gets the first free throw for South Carolina. And even with the injuries they've had, they're very balanced, talented, athletic. They like to get up and down the floor. And Wilson, very good at that. Number one recruit in high school a couple years ago. She's from the Columbia, South Carolina area, and that was a big coup for Dawn Staley when she signed there. Remember, this was a program that had been to eight NCAA tournaments in their history until six years ago. They've been there every year since, and they've become a power in the Southeast Conference. Martucci in the lane, and Quinnipiac still looking for its first points. Really, in. really impressed with South Carolina's ability to guard all the screening action of Quinnipiac early. And going to need a tight out, out here. Davis with the jumper makes it 9 nothing. South Carolina less than three minutes gone by here in Stockton. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Quicksilver card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. Every purchase, everywhere, and in part by Pizza Hut. No one out pizzas the hut. A long way from Hamden, Connecticut, and Columbia, South Carolina. Each team having to travel about 3,000 miles to get here. Oregon didn't seem to mind going to Bridgeport 3,000 miles as a 10 seed advancing to the Elite Eight. UCLA fell to Connecticut today in Bridgeport. And weather's been on the rainy side the last day and a half here. Temperature in the mid-50s. and. Northern California. Good start for South Carolina, up 9-0 over Quinnipiac here in the Sweet 16. There's Martucci in the lane. And the shot clock at 8. McClure facing up. Tries to shoot over Davis, and it still won't drop. Quinnipiac 0 for 6 from the floor. Another contested shot. That's what South Carolina has to do. They have to make Quinnipiac take contested shots in this game. Davis again left open and connects again plus a foul. A chance at a three-point play for Davis. Mann's picked up the foul, the second on the Bobcats. South Carolina showing a lot of poise and patience and getting good shots because of Asia Wilson's activity. The defense really sucked in. Good rhythm dribble by Kayla Davis, and she knocks it down. So you were telling me before the game, you think 
if she continues on the path she's on right now, she could be the number one pick in the WNBA draft in a year? I think she could change the top of the draft. I do. Because at 6'2", with the talent she has on the offensive end, now she has got some work to do. But I, I'll tell you this, Dave, she has improved a lot this year. Her decision-making, her willingness to defend. And, yeah, I think she can change the complexion of the top three in the draft. Out of bounds, a turnover by Quinnipiac. Well, good genes for Kayla Davis, her dad Antonio, longtime NBA player, colleague of ours at ESPN. There's Kayla's mother, Kendra, to Antonio's left. Now, keep in mind, there are some rules based on eligibility that could allow a player, based on when they graduate and their age, to declare early. And that has really changed the WNBA a lot. It's changed college women's basketball. And we've had some juniors declare. And again, a lot of that is because the money you can make overseas as opposed to the money you can make in the WNBA. Got a foul on Quinnipiac. That is the third team foul. And the winner of this game will play the winner of Florida State and Oregon State later tonight here in Stockton. The game is streaming live on the ESPN app as well. As if Oregon State didn't need any more motivation, maybe with the Ducks winning <laughs> earlier today. And how about what Oregon's been able to do as a uh, athletic department? You got both the men's and women's teams in the Elite Eight, and South Carolina's women's team trying to join the men in the Elite Eight. Great win for the Gamecock men yesterday. Yeah, really impressive. And Kelly Graves, I mean, what he did at Gonzaga, he had that reputation. Didn't have the level of talent consistently like he has in this freshman class, for example. But talk about a fearless approach. I mean, Oregon just a Maryland team that's got experience, and they weren't afraid at all. So is the Pac-12 that much better? Is again, we got to stop it here. Might be a clock issue. We're not told why, but it, it, is the Pac-12 that good? I mean, Oregon had 13 losses. Well, they're the number one RPI conference in the country, and if you look at their performance so far in the NCAA tournament, they're backing that up. You have Stanford as a two seed that's in the Elite Eight. Another miss for Quinnipiac. 0 for 7 from the floor. South Carolina leading 12 zip here midway through the first quarter. And that pass deflected, turned over. There's Carly Fabry, the coach's daughter, and Quinnipiac gives it right back. Davis again left open, short on the three pointer. Jen Fay with a rebound. Here's Fabry. 0 for 8. And those, for those were shots that they were making in the first and second round games. They just got to relax a little bit, hit some shots. And on the defensive end, I mean, obviously there are challenges because Kayla Davis is just a difficult assignment at 6-2 with her tools. But I still believe that they have the right idea in taking out Asia Wilson. And they're triple teaming her. Although she got free that time, and she'll go to the line. But to your point on the shooting, Quinnipiac made 15 threes against Miami in the second round as Martucci, one of their key players, just picked up her second foul. There's Trisha Fabry in her 22nd year as the head coach at Quinnipiac. She was telling us her story yesterday. You know, the school started out playing Division II. They won two games her first year, won six games her second year, then seven, then nine, and she almost quit. She thought about uh, giving it up because she had known winning. That's what she was used to as a player. Went to the NCAA tournament in Fairfield a couple times. The athletic director convinced her to stay. Eventually, they went Division I, and now they've won 85 games the last three years and just got their first NCAA tournament wins. And she gets to coach her daughter. Yeah. Well, she talked about just that transition from Division II to Division One. It's tough, you know? I mean, more resources, you're recruiting different players. And Patricia Fabry has always been about family. That's what she built this program on. Her players call her their role model, their mother, their sister, all of the above. And she is an outstanding motivator. But her team right now 0 for 9 from the floor. Six minutes in, here's Gray from outside. The three won't fall. The putback won't go either for Herbert Harrigan. Nakia Herbert Harrigan is getting a lot more minutes now with Elena Coates' injury. And 
Herbert Harrigan intercepts that pass. Cuevas Moore on the attack. And she's fouled by Fabry. Bianca Cuevas Moore will go to the line for two free throws. Fabry picking up the foul. You see the numbers so far in the NCAA tournament for Cuevas Moore, who's from the Bronx. Actually, she's a high school teammate of Jen Fay, who plays for Quinnipiac. Yeah, they played together on the same AU team for Exodus. And then later on, Faye would go to play for Nazareth, and they're still good friends. They have each other's contact information. But, uh, you know, it's a little awkward, Dave, you know, <laughs> playing each other at the tournament. You got to get some separation. It is 16 to nothing, South Carolina. And on this possession, if, if Quinnipiac can just knock down one of those shots, I mean, they have gotten some good licks that just haven't gone down. I think they would relax. Takes a little bit of the pressure off once you see the ball go through the net. Faye misfires on the three-pointer. 0 for 10 and 0 for 4 from behind the arc as a team. Kayla Davis had that go off her leg out of bounds. Well, you talked about the friendship with Cuellos Moore and Faye. Here's Nazareth Regional High School in Bronx. Those are some ballers. You know when you wear your gold chain there, Bianca Cuellos <laughs> Moore, she swagged out with the jersey. Here's Faye leaning in. And so the first free throws for Quinnipiac coming up. And that helps your team to relax. What Quinnipiac relies on on the offensive end is help. Like, they have to be a team on the offensive end where they need your defense to overhelp. They're very good at passing. They had 44 assists over the first two games. But South Carolina is doing a great job one-on-one -on -one defensively. We were talking about the Bronx. I, I think that's a Bronx cheer. We saw some of the Oregon State fans cheering there that are in attendance after that one went in for the first point of the game. It's hard to not cheer for Quinnipiac if you're a women's basketball fan because this doesn't happen often. I mean, 12 seed, you go to Coral Gables, you knock out the Big East Tournament champions in Marquette, then you take out Miami on their home court in a game that they scored 85 points in Coral Gables, and it was just amazing to watch. It's a fourth time a 12 seed has gone to the Sweet 16. The last was BYU in 2014. but. 12 seeds or higher are 0 and 6 lifetime in this round. Turnover there by South Carolina. So better defense here from Quinnipiac in the last few possessions. You get a few stops, you get some baskets, and you're right back into this game. I think at this point they'd love to just be down nine, right? Yeah. After a quarter. Three pointer goes. Sarah Schuin. 28% on the season. First field goal of the game for Quinnipiac. And they've scored the last five points. And coming right back is Harris with the jumper. First freshman point guard that has started for Dawn Staley in her nine seasons as the head coach at South Carolina. And has been exceptional in handling all the responsibilities for this team. We know Dawn is hard on point guards to begin with, having been a terrific point guard, three-time gold medalist, but even more so with a freshman point guard, but Harris has shown that she can handle it. Timer down to two, Faye, fall-away jumper, won't fall. She likes the spin move, Faye. She used it a lot early in the NCAA tournament. It's effective for her, doesn't go there. Wilson battling for position, and they're going to get Stratman A for a foul. So free throws coming up for Gray. Well, on the offensive end for Quinnipiac, Sarah Schuin is 6'2", but she can shoot the outside so shot. So she forces your post defender to have to come outside and guard screens. So that's a favorable matchup. And on the other end, the freshman, as you mentioned, Ty Hare is so smooth. She's a Hoosier from Indiana and has been ready for March Madness. I said Gray meant uh, Wilson at the free throw line. And Harris from Noblesville, Indiana. Wilson, two-time SEC Player of the Year, MVP of the SEC Tournament. 
Gets both free throws. She shoots 73% from the line. 20 to 5, Gamecocks, and they have not missed a foul shot yet. Here's McClure driving to the basket. Can't get it to fall. That's a good option for the Bobcats because McClure is the kind of player that can score one on one opportunities. And how about the block from Mann? Morgan Mann's the hero of that game in Miami that you were talking about when she had six threes. Mann just hustles as a help defender in transition. And what a block. Using her size does a good job of avoiding contact. All right, so if you're Trisha Fabry, got a foul here on South Carolina offensive foul. What's your message after the first quarter to your team to try to settle them down? Guys, we've gotten good looks. You know, some of the shots we've taken were contested, but some we can make, and we just got to hit those shots. We're fine. You know, you got to expect a team in this situation taking on a very good South Carolina team to have some jitters, to maybe take a minute to find their rhythm. She's good at instilling confidence, so... I'm sure they're not worried in the first quarter. We heard the Quinnipiac players say yesterday that winning those games in the first two rounds, it was addictive. Uh, beating teams you're not supposed to as Faye gets the bounce there. Can they find that rhythm after a slow start to the game here in Stockton? It was 16 to nothing at one point, so they've scored seven of the last 11 points. Gray down the lane, gets the bounce. Actually going to say three-second violation. Now they're going to say offensive foul. We're trying to find out they're going to count the basket here. Going back to that offensive set, the score by Jin Fay Right here, she's not afraid. She's got a smaller defender and Quavos Moore. But even when Asia Wilson pursues, she's not afraid to take it at the shot blocker. They did credit the bucket, and then Aja Wilson called for a foul for South Carolina. Aja Wilson's working really hard on the offensive end for position, even when she's not getting the ball. Yeah, she has six points so far. All of those coming at the foul line, only one official field goal attempt. Five seconds to go in the quarter. Schuen with two. Got to let it fly. And that's the end of first. So South Carolina leads by 15 over Trisha Fabry's Bobcats. Coach Fabry will join Molly McGrath when we come back to Stockton. All Gamecocks, 3-1 here in the regional semi. If I could pick one word to describe our run in this tournament, I would say expected. Great. It's tenacity, it's the fight, it's the toughness. First NCAA win in school history, then to do it again, and to beat ranked teams that we've never done before, is historic and legendary. Back here in Stockton, California, Quinnipiac, the Cinderella story of the tournament, but right now they trail to South Carolina, and, here, and I'm here with head coach Trisha Fabry. Coach, some good looks on offense, but they're just not going in. How do you get some momentum there? Yeah, I think we just settled down. It just took us too long to settle down. We had some great shots. We're just not in rhythm and really playing too fast on offense. So I think we caught our breath, and now we've got a long way to go against a good South Carolina team. But I, I like our effort, keep battling on defense, and take a deep breath on offense, and try and get this under double digits before halftime. Yeah, down 15. What's your message to your team in this timeout? Keep battling and get more in the groove, which I liked how we finished the end of the first quarter, playing more confidently. Again, taking a deep breath on that offensive side. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, Quinnipiac did not score until the 2.51 mark of that first quarter. They trailed 16 to nothing. They finished 2 of 14 from the field in that opening frame. Well, I like what Coach Fabry said because there's a difference between playing fast and playing rushed. They are a team that likes to put the ball up and take shots quickly when they're open. But if they're playing rushed, there's not a rhythm to it. 
Your passes aren't crisp. So let's look and see if they calm down a little bit here in the second quarter. And since that uh, first point, they have outscored South Carolina 7-6, so they have calmed down a little bit. Gray and Schuen get tangled up, and they're going to get Alicia Gray for her first foul. The one thing we've seen Quinnipiac do differently on the offensive end is they're starting to use their post more in screening action. They will force their opponent's bigs to have to guard on the perimeter, which is not comfortable, and they've had a little success there. Entry pass too tall for Thornton. One of the challenges for Quinnipiac to come back in a game like this is, you know, they don't have a, a single go-to score. They're so balanced. Their leading score averages 10 points per game. Everybody's between six and 10 points per game. So who is that player that can get you a basket when you absolutely need it? That was the one interesting thing about first and second round is that Jim Faye had 20 against Marquette and Morgan Manns had 22 against Miami. So they did have some players that were willing to take over in games, which is, is huge at this time of year. And South Carolina has several of those players. We saw Kayla Davis in the first quarter with eight points. South Carolina ball traveling violation. The final spot of Chicago's Frozen Four will be filled tomorrow at 6 Eastern on ESPNU and watch ESPN. Follow every championship at NCAA.com, the official online home for all 90 NCAA championships. Here's Gray. Missed the shot. Herbert Harrigan there. She thought she was fouled. Gray scoops it up and puts it in. Got a box out. The size, the length of South Carolina can really overtake a game on the offensive glass if you let it. Well, the last time we saw Alicia Gray, she was being carried off the floor late in their second round win against Arizona State. It looked like a knee injury. She's had a major knee injury in the past, but it turned out to be just a Charlie horse is how they described it. It looked serious at the time. And she's played well here in the first half. A steal by South Carolina nearly. And man beats the shot clock buzzer with a three-pointer. You have to be very careful when going for steals against Quinnipiac because they are a team that thrives off of help. If you have to sag in and help, they will find the open man. Strong drive by Davis and a Quinnipiac foul. Bianca Cuevas Moore loves to turn it up on the defensive end. So she went for a steal right here, doesn't get it. And Fabry, great job, draws an extra defender in the kick out to who used to be a reluctant shooter in Mans, which uh, didn't see a lot of that against Miami. Six of eight from three. School record six made threes in that game. She said Coach Fabry would yell at her two or three times of practice to say, Morgan Mans, if you don't shoot the ball, I am not going to play you. And she said, I wish I had listened a little earlier after that Miami game because she was hot. Here's McClure with one of you down 16 points here to the top seed in the Stockton region. Stroudman on the drive, dumps it down low. Schuen, no. And Alicia Gray out of there with it, going to push it ahead. I think Quinnipiac has to do a better job of using ball rotation, trying to get the ball to both sides of the floor, make that South Carolina defense have to shift and guard you in multiple spaces, and you will get a better shot. Well, they're not getting any offensive rebounds right now. They have none. While South Carolina has rebounded half of its misses. They just got uh, Fabry for the personal, their second, second team foul. I mentioned South Carolina is a one seed for the fourth straight year, and this is the third time during that span they've had to travel west as uh, Davis knocks down the three. And the other two times they lost. Last year in Sioux Falls, they fell to Syracuse. In Palo Alto in 2014, they fell to North Carolina. The only time they made it to the Final Four as a one seed was two years ago in Greensboro. Ended up losing in the Final Four to Notre Dame. And they'll play either Oregon State or Florida State if they advance today on Monday night. Wilson fouled, and she'll go back to the line where she's six for six so far. 
Well, one thing Quinnipiac wanted to do was keep the ball on one side of the floor. So right here, you see defensively, they're going to play Bianca Cuevas and Alicia Gray, not let them turn the corner. But what that does is leave the shooter open. If you're going to send the defense, you can't allow the pass out because you're going to be in trouble. You've got everybody strong side, and it takes a lot to get out there to contest that shot. So far, your projection on... Taylor Davis right on cue because she's been brilliant here in the first half at 13 points. Wilson, meanwhile, has all eight of her points at the free throw line. Davis started out at Georgia Tech. She was there for two years. She's from Georgia and then transferred where she was an all-SEC tournament team performer this year. Here's her dad and mom. Antonio obviously played the NBA for a long time. Mom Kendra in attendance. Well, when Don Staley talked about the fact that everyone expected Kayla to just be great right, right away, and she struggled mightily with her shot, but for a player that's used to having the ball in her hand, she had to just get in a groove with this team, with this new piece, and it has been better without Elena Coates that has given her more room to roll. Gray missed on the drive, tapped out, and kept alive for South Carolina, fresh 30. Off of Gray's foot into the backcourt, and look at Fabry hustle. Over and back violation anyway, Fabry trying to get the steal. Yeah, this Quinnipiac team plays all out on both ends of the floor. Right here, Fabry dives, makes a big play. And that's what we saw from them in the first and second rounds. A lot of scrappy defense, tips and deflections. They just got to get into more of a rhythm here. Carly Fabry made the all-tournament team of the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Her mom, Tricia, played at Fairfield and 26 years ago made the all-tournament team. Went to the NCAA tournament that year. It was interesting. We talked about Gino Oriana, you know, wearing the, the Quinnipiac shirt and said that they reminded him of his 1991 team. Well, that's the year that Fairfield made it to the NCAA tournament behind Trisha Fabric. Just a great connection between the two programs. And Morgan Manns is a player that went to Connecticut camps. I mean, she's a local kid. Nice move there. Faye has been effective finding mismatches and her ability to score around the rim. But there's a lot of connections to the Connecticut program for Quinnipiac. So I would say they're the bigger fans of Connecticut as Dino is there. Gino helped Trisha get the job back 22 years ago. And Quinnipiac has settled down, but is it too late? They've made five of the last 10. They were down 16 zip. They're down 17 right now. And an offensive foul here on Quinnipiac. There's Gino the other day at the press conference showing off the T-shirt. You got to love that. It's like the it's Superman awesome. bust out. And look at the smile. He's like, look, Connecticut is winning. And they are. I mean, having... This point of PX team in the Steve 16, obviously his team has been dominant, rolling to the Elite Eight earlier today. Just cool to see well, the best coach right now in the women's game, and one of the best coaches in all of basketball, supporting uh, a school like Quinnipiac by wearing that T-shirt and getting the players to encourage them as well. But right now, Quinnipiac in trouble midway through the second quarter, trailing the top seed, South Carolina. Coming up on the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report, Maria, Rebecca, and Andy, of course, will break down the South Carolina Quinnipiac game. But Oregon, how about that? The third ever double digit seed to can make I, it to the Elite Eight. Can I join the party? It's looking pretty good over there. We might as well. It wasn't a fluke. It's, it's a good team. <laughs> the youth movement marches on. Yeah, we'll tell you how they did it at the half. Back to you, Pash. All right, Maureen, here's some other Sweet 16 headlines. How about a Gunbawale? 35 points as Notre Dame moves on despite being shorthanded. Baylor, an easy win. Connecticut will play Oregon in the Elite Eight. Another Final Four at stake on Monday night for the Huskies. Impressive win for Notre Dame, a team that lost Brianna Turner. A lot of questions about whether or not they were going to have enough scoring. But Muffin McGraw, one of the best coaches in the game, gets it done. 
Out of the timeout, Gray with the basket. Eight points now, six rebounds for her. And it's a 19-point lead for South Carolina. They got seven baskets from inside the arc, two from three-point land, and a perfect 13 to 13 at the free throw line. Wilson with the steal, an easy two on the other end. How about your 6'5 post player shooting the gap on defense? I like it. And there she is again, breaking up the pass and getting the steal. Wilson gets it ahead, beautifully done by Asia Wilson. Well, Asia Wilson's dad wanted her to be a point forward. That's what he told Don Staley before she joined the program. And Don said, I don't know about that. She's more of a <laughs> traditional point guard type coach, but very impressive defense for Asia Wilson. You see her parents there looking on. Shoot the gap, 6'5", anticipating the pass. She does a good job in the open floor of getting out. She has a very versatile skill set. We've seen more of that without Elena Coach. She's playing at the high post. She's become more of a decision maker. Nice shot there by Martucci. It is kind of funny that Wilson said, you know, she really wasn't that interested in basketball. And her dad tricked her into <laughs> becoming interested in basketball. Her dad, Roscoe, played at a small school in the Columbia area, did not play at South Carolina, played professionally overseas. And all the things that they would do to build the strength and athletic ability of Wilson, she used to have to wear a weighted vest. You'd give her a weighted ball to use. And she developed rather under the radar. I mean, she didn't play on a big time AAU team. I mean, you say, yes, she's the number one team in the country, but it's a player in the country coming out. But as far as her development, you know, she wasn't one of those that was at every event. And, you know, she did a lot of one on one workouts. and. Don Staley has continued to grow her game since. She has 12 points, four rebounds so far in this game. South Carolina up 21. Three minutes to go here in the first half. Look at how hard Asia Wilson posts inside. She'll get called for three seconds, but there are some opportunities for her team to give her the ball. They've got to do a better job of finding it right here. Good pass from Alicia Gray. She keeps it high, and that's just money. Going to her left hand, dominant hand. It just seems like you know, so much more has opened up for her offensively since the injury to Elena Coates. Three ball goes. Then since and she won't have the first field goal of the game for Quinnipiac. They're down 16 nothing seven minutes in. And since then, you know, they've hung right with South Carolina. We wonder if it was just. You know, six or seven nothing run to start the game for South Carolina. What kind of chance could be at would have to win this game? And the first few minutes of a game are important. I mean, especially when you are in the Sweet 16, smaller margin for error. And you want to get off to a good start because that's often the team that's able to get comfortable, play their game, and, and control the momentum. She went picking up her second foul. And Wilson back at the line where she's eight of eight so far. It's another one. Coverage of the Division I Men's Basketball Championship Regional Finals continues today on TBS at 6 p.m. For more on game times and listings, go to NCAA.com. Oregon's men's and women's basketball teams in the Elite Eight. South Carolina's women's team trying to join the men's program in the Elite Eight. How about that, uh, an all-SEC regional final on the men's side? Wow. Eight SEC teams on the ladies' side earned bids, the most of any conference this year. Hit nine bids last year, but no teams made the Final Four. Remember, the Pac-12 had two teams in the Final Four last year. Another turnover by Quinnipiac. Numbers here. Wilson, the trailer, goes to her offhand, the right hand, to get the layup. Big, strong, powerful facts. South Carolina just showing what they can do against this Quinnipiac team. It's got some fight in them, but they need to show it. Yeah, there's just no defensive answer right now, though, to handle the athletic ability of Wilson and the power down low. Artucci's three is good. You know, there was so much conversation coming into this game about 
how to say Quinnipiac. <laughs> and I, I should have just said it once and then said Bobcats for the rest right. of the time. But I don't want to I don't want to hear it. I practice it and I know I'm saying it right. So forget the haters. You just gotta roll with it. <laughs> I've had more emails and texts from people that live in Connecticut in advance of this game saying, please, uh -huh. we are counting on you to pronounce it correctly. Yeah, it's a Quinnipiac. But I've been saying that, you've been saying that. Whatever. Just don't even read your Twitter mentions, you're trying to stay away, stay oh, away. Never. I just trust Rebecca. Rebecca will always tell me the truth. Here's Faye, and it's another three. So Quinnipiac is eight of 11, and four of four from three-point land in the second quarter, yet down 18 because of that poor start. Dawn Staley not happy. Uh, we talked about how difficult it might be for some to say Quinnipiac, not for the Quinnipiac players. Quinnipiac. It's Quinnipiac. I've heard people say Quinnipiac, Quinn, and I step in and go, it's Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. So they just kind of emphasize the I and not like let it flow. Quinnipiac. There you go. Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. <laughs> Quinnipiac. You know what, that actually, I might have just learned something just now. Quit a P.A. That act. From Hamden, Connecticut, enrollment is just under 10,000. And again, a program that was Division II and Trisha Fabry got the job 22 years ago. And over the last three seasons, they have won the MAC Conference without a first-team all-conference player, which is... Amazing, they've been able to win three straight regular season titles yet not get a player on, on the first team this year. They get a takeaway here. Each team has made each of its last six shot attempts. Both teams catching fire. Out of bounds, McClure couldn't save it. South Carolina possession, 23 seconds to go in the half. Well, Martucci is their toughest defender and she's had to miss some time on the floor because of foul trouble, but when she's on the court, they are more disruptive, and she's just got a fire about her and has made a difference on the court in the last few possessions. Ten seconds to go in the half. Here's Cuevas Moore. Here comes the ball screen. Two seconds to go. Jumper off the mark, and that's the end of the first half. And again, you wonder, if you're a Quinnipiac home fan, you're sitting at home and you're thinking, man, if the start would have just been better, it was 16-0 South Carolina. Quinnipiac played great in the second quarter, shot 73%. But South Carolina and Asia Wilson just too much to handle on that low block. Wilson with 16 no points, and she's standing by with Molly. Thank you, Dave. Asia, 10 trips to the line, some big plays in the post. What were you able to take advantage of in that first half? Um, I mean, they're playing me defensively this, the way that I've never even seen it before. Actually, they're fronting me a lot. So, I mean, I'm just taking what the defense gives me, and that's my teammates are looking for me, and I'm just trying to get up a shot so the ref can at least see a little foul and get to the line and get points on the board. You guys went on a 16-0 run to open up this game, but Quinnipiac is really fighting back. How do you keep the control in your favor? Um, I mean, it's just all mental. We, we understand that this is a great team. They're, they're good at coming back, and so we just got to – Keep the same mentality that we had in the first part of the uh, game and just come out and continue to attack it and, and just get into the paint. All right, thank you, Asia. Dave. Obviously, a lot expected of the South Carolina team to get to the Elite Eight. They did not disappoint Maria Taylor in that first half. Time for the Northwestern Mutual Halftime Report. And Dave Pash is absolutely right. South Carolina did not disappoint. We will try not to disappoint you either. Maria Taylor, Rebecca Lobo, and Andy <laughs> we'll do our best. <laughs> we'll, we'll do, we'll our, do best. our best. Asia Wilson, 10 for 10 from the free throw line, but great guard play as well. We also saw, saw Kayla Davis. She was able to score 13 points in 13 minutes. Efficient, but dealing with foul trouble. Well, first, let's just start by saying knowing the China Robinson, she has been practicing in her yes. hotel room how to say Quinnipiac. I mean, that's what's been so good about South Carolina. Carolina at times this season, in particular the last two games, is that when the inside is taken away or limited, Kayla Davis has the ability to get it going from the perimeter. And this is what she brought early on in the game when Asia Wilson was getting double and triple teamed inside. You saw three-point shots. You saw coming up on the pull-up, and you saw getting fouled. She's looked really good. 
We also had questions about uh, Alicia Gray. Remember, she has a sprained knee. We didn't even know she'd be able to play in this round. Coach, what have you seen? Yeah, and she way? brings so much to the table for, for South Carolina. She's her second leading rebounder, assist giver, you name it, field goal percentage player. I see no signs of an injury. She's really done all the things that she normally does in a game. She's done them. She's done them at a high level. She has 10 points, 6 rebounds, 5 of 11 shooting. She's got them running the floor offensively, short jumpers. She's been right on point. We should have just asked him what she wasn't doing. It right. wouldn't have taken as much time <laughs> as well as she's playing. She's doing it as well all she's well playing. right now. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. Quinnipiac was down 22 to 7 after the first quarter. Storm back in the second quarter, but still down 18. A spot in the Elite Eight at, uh, uh, on the line. Dave Paschal with China Robinson. Well, you hit a partner in pregame, and you said Kayla Davis is an emerging star. She was great in that first half, as was Asia Wilson, who you know what you're going to get. Yeah, we saw a lot of balance from the game, Cox. And obviously, when you have a player like Asia Wilson, she draws a lot of attention defensively. But we saw her with some defense getting into the passing lane. She got to the free throw line with 10 free throws in the game. She's just so tough. And because she's a effective on the interior. Guess what? It opens up options and opportunities for Kayla Davis. And boy, has she been outstanding knocking down three-point shots. She's two for three for long range. She has 13 points and 13 minutes of play at 6-2. She is just a problem. What if the X shot 40%? but was 2 of 14 in the first quarter, 8 of 11 in the second quarter. South Carolina pretty consistent with more on the Gamecocks. And what Don Staley had to say, here's Molly McGrath. Well, they Don Staley very happy that South Carolina is plus 13 on the board. She said, we're taking advantage of our height and our speed. She's also very happy with Asia Davis, her ability to handle double teams. But she did say they will go to her less in this second half. They want to open up more driving lanes. And they'll look to players like Bianca Cuevas more to step it up more in the second half. And also Alicia Gray had a good first half for South Carolina. Molly 12 points and six rebounds. Asia Wilson at 16 points. Kayla Davis 13. Bianca Cuevas Moore took just one shot, but it didn't need her offense in that first half. And here's Davis picking up right where she left off. So we see a change in defense by the Bobcats out of the locker room. They were in a zone, but good ball movement from South Carolina, and they get a score. South Carolina trying to get wing number 30 on the season. The losses were at Connecticut, at Duke, Tennessee, and at Missouri. And if they were to advance to the Elite Eight, it'd be the second time in the last four years. Granted, they've been a one seed each time as McClure connects. Quinnipiac has never been to an Elite Eight. In fact, no 12 seed or worse has ever made it past the Sweet 16. Stroke Money battling with Wilson. That's three fouls now on Pablo, the sophomore from Latvia. So winner of this game will play uh, Oregon State or Florida State. That's our next game here from Stockton. A couple of good things happening for Quinnipiac early in this third quarter. They had some foul trouble, so now they got players that can play free defensively. Asia Wilson with a good score there. But the other thing is that they've been running more isolation on their offense, and they're getting some good looks. They're getting players in position to score. Davis with the rebound off the missed three-point try by Fortin. Winnipeg is the highest seed remaining in the NCAA tournament, women's and men's. You've got the 11 seed Xavier on the men's side playing Gonzaga for the right to go to the final four today. And then also a 10 seed Oregon as Davis hits a three. Oregon advancing to the Elite Eight earlier today with a win over Maryland. How about Xavier and Chris Mack? I mean, I remember Chris Mack from my days at Wake Forest. He was an assistant under Skip Prosser, and what a job he's done there. I mean, the injuries that they had this season, just no one saw it coming. That zone, the change of the zone. See, coaches, don't be stubborn. If you got to make adjustments, make adjustments. It's worked for Chris Mack. Obviously, Arizona had trouble handling that zone, especially late in the game. As uh, Xavier came back to win and move on to play the Zags today. Got South Carolina's men's team in the Elite Eight, and the women's team trying to join them. And technical foul here. 
See who they call it on. I'm going to call it on the Quinnipiac bench on Coach Fabry. It was interesting because she's way down there, and the call was made in front of the South Carolina bench. Well, Gino might have put her on the radar when he said something about uh, her language That's in a right. press conference. That's so right. he might have put her on, on watch <laughs> with the officials, put her on blast. I think he even said her mouth was worse than his, which I find hard to <laughs> believe as Davis gets the first free throw. Yeah, he totally called her out. So Davis shooting the technicals. It counts as a team foul. And it sounds like they may have said it was against the assistant coach. So Coach Fabry not taking uh, Gino will have to sit back with his <laughs> comments on the language. Said it was on the assistant. Largest lead of the day for South Carolina now. Kayla Davis, by the way, with 20 points for the second straight game here in the NCAA tournament. Well, she's a game changer. And what's different about South Carolina is they can now put pressure on your offense with the transfers and Alicia Day, excuse me, Alicia Gray, who scores right there, and Kayla Davis. Now you've got premium players who can play multiple positions, and they bring a scoring factor that South Carolina has never had. So all the talk when we were in Columbia last week about maybe South Carolina being better offensively without Elena Coates, we can buy that. I think they're different. You know, I think they have a better chemistry with this group, with these pieces they have right now. And good execution here. Just the screener is usually open, and that's what happens. Gray sets it for Wilson and gets an easy one. But sometimes players just adapt to an identity a little better, and the two-post look limited Gray and what she could do inside and limited Davis because there just was not enough room for those guards to get in and move and be creative. Molly has more on Coates' absence and what it means to the Gamecocks. Yeah, that's right. John Staley admitted it's helped and benefited their team's spacing. It gives Asia Wilson more room to move in the post. As LaChina said, it leaves more gaps for their guards to penetrate. And Staley also stressed that Asia Wilson stepped up all facets of her game since Coates' injury. She's taken on a more vocal leadership role. Yeah, she's been very emotional to Molly's point. You know, she has been, when they needed a rally cry against Arizona State, she not only was a leader with her shot blocking, as we saw right there, but even verbally just bringing some calm to her team. And that's usually something you see a guard do. On the drive is the help defender, 6-5, no way. She is already the all-time leading shot blocker in Gamecock history. And led the SEC in blocks this year. Way boss Moore, no good on the three. Rebounded by Carly Fabry, the head coach's daughter. For Quinnipiac. She's Faye calling for the ball. She's got a smaller Cuevas Moore on her. But the Bobcats weren't able to recognize it in time to get it to her. And the shot clock at five. McCourt cleans it up and she's fouled. Check out ESPNW.com, the NCAA Women's Championship. Stories on confident stars carrying Notre Dame and Stanford to the Elite Eight. And Lauren Cox, what she's dealing with at Baylor as well. You can vote for your favorite hand clap hoopla video at ESPNW.com. Really impressed with Kim Mulkey's team. I mean, they put a hurting on Louisville, and I did not expect that. Jeff Walls is a very talented team. He does a great job as a coach, but this is a very focused Baylor team. They stumbled towards the end of the season, but they regrouped in a major way. It's blowout games, really, in every game. By the way, Gray picked up her third foul. They're stretching her out over on that South Carolina bench. That's the leg that she injured in their second-round game against Arizona State. It looked serious at the time. She was carried off the floor, but they later described it as a Charlie horse. I'm just trying to keep her loose. Excellent entry pass, and a putback goes by Kleine, plus a foul. So again, this is what took place last week in Columbia, late in the game, too. I mean, they were already without Coates, and with two and a half to go in the game, they lose Alicia Gray, and one of the assistants had to carry her back to the South Carolina locker room. 
Yeah, she grabbed on her leg immediately, but it wasn't until she got up and tried to move. And I guess they called it a Charlie horse in her hamstring. Don Staley was, when I say relieved, that's probably an understatement. You're already missing coats, and that would have been a major blow because of how versatile Gray is. You could play her at multiple positions, and she's so coachable. Very low maintenance player. And that was a fight against Arizona State. They nearly lost that game. Shot clock at five here for Quinnipiac. Traveling is called. You see the numbers, her efficiency. She could get on the glass, and that was your concern without Coates, was the rebounding factor, because Elena Coates would give you extra possessions. But Gamecocks have done a good job with Gray at the power forward, and her guards have chimed in on some rebounds as well. Three-point try, no good for Cuevas Moore. Fabry with the long rebound. And that's a foul on Cuevas Moore. First on her. Third team foul on South Carolina. We were doing some math and we realized that Carly Fabry has uh, really been a, a Bobcat her whole life. <laughs> I mean, her mom was the head coach there before she was even born. And she's been the team's water girl. She's rebound for players over the years, summer camps. She may be just as synonymous in the program as her mom is. That's the first women's sport at Quinnipiac to win an NCAA tournament game. The men's lacrosse team and the men's ice hockey team <coughs> previously were the only teams that had won NCAA tournament games. And obviously the, the Fabry family getting to be a part of school lore with their run to Sweet 16 really just been one of the great stories of the NCAA tournament to look at where coach Fabry took this program to making it to the sweet 16 just a strong belief in everything that they're about they share the basketball they are great teammates but today it just outmatched so far in this one and Strowman just picked up her fourth personal foul or team foul on the Bobcats Again, they were down 16-0 to start the game to South Carolina. Battled back, but the Gamecocks was too talented offensively. And again, this is that zone that Quinnipiac goes to. They're going to try to force some turnovers, maybe force South Carolina to play fast. But what a brilliant move there by Wilson. And how about the handle, too, to keep the dribble on that drive there? Most of her damage has been done at the foul line. A three-pointer there, but Wilson, 10 of 10 at the free throw line. All those came in the first half. Five to seven from the floor. So you get two 20-point scores for South Carolina. And now two 10-point scores for Quinnipiac, Martucci and Faye, each with 10. Davis now with 23. That's her fourth three-pointer and five tries. It's like water. She has a pure shot. And if you are not there on the catch, the elevation, you can forget it. She may be the key player for South Carolina uh, to be a team that challenges Connecticut because we were talking about this last week as Wilson scores. Is there a team that has enough offensive weapons that can score for an entire game and go toe-to-toe -to -toe with UConn? The way South Carolina's playing today, you wonder maybe they're that team. Yeah, and, and Kayla Davis was not in this much of a groove around that time of the season as far as her shot. So if you go back to that UConn game, there was a stretch where they weren't really able to score. They lost to Connecticut by 11, but perhaps they're a different team right now. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. Every purchase, everywhere. Welcome back to the NCAA Women's Championship presented by Capital One. They passed LaChina Robinson, Molly McGrath in Stockton, California, about an hour south of Sacramento, where later today it'll be Oregon State and Florida State. Likely to play South Carolina in the Elite Eight. The Gamecocks up 29 late in the third quarter. Sydney Weiss and the Beavers trying to get back to the Final Four. Talk about an outstanding point guard. Sydney Weiss can stroke the three. She's got length. She's got great vision. 
And who thought that Oregon State would be in this position this season after losing two players to the WNBA? Scott Blewett, definitely one of the best coaches in the country. Been there seven years, and he's turned that program around as Davis again. That's another three. Five three-pointers for Davis. A game high, 26 points. Scary. We all knew what Kayla Davis was capable of, and once she has found her confidence and her stroke, what a weapon on the offensive end for Don Staley. And at her size, 6-2, it's going to be a hard guard for either Oregon State, Florida State, and maybe the teams in the Final Four should South Carolina get there. I mean, we haven't even seen her post up a lot. I'd right. love to see her inside. She could use that 6-2 in so many different ways. Here's Gray, the length of the floor, gets the bounce on the way up. South Carolina won its opening round game by 50. Trailed for a good part of the second round affair with Arizona State, but they've dominated from the start of this game against the Cinderella. McClure now with nine points for Quinnipiac. Davis splits the double team and has it taken away by McClure. Getting the bounce is Sarah Schuin. Schuin has been used to stretch the bigger defender for South Carolina. Just a really solid player. I love her toughness on the, on the glass as well. Great look on the inside. And South Carolina is doing a better job in this game of finding Wilson in multiple ways. You heard her tell Molly she's getting fronted. There were double and triple teams there. But she doesn't stop working, and her team is better with post-entry passes today. And they're shooting close to 80% of the second half. And powers it in. Well, Quinnipiac, third NCAA tournament appearance. First time they've won games in the tournament. And just the fourth time a 12 seed has been this far, but they're going up against a South Carolina team that has had way too much offensive talent. And even with the loss of Elena Coates, who averaged 13 points and 11 rebounds, she led the SEC in rebounding. Even without her, they have dominated the glass. Inside a minute to go here in the third. Okay, nice look to Mance. Gamecocks have made their last seven shots from the floor, trying to close the quarter strong. She watched Davis too, and she hasn't taken any bad shots. They've been all in rhythm. Nope. Nothing's been forced. She gets to the rim so easily. 28 points now for Davis. She's a problem. She's a problem, Dave. Put the rest of the bracket on notice. It's been eye-opening watching her today. But again, you called that in warm-ups. Got a foul here on... Davis with 4.2 in the clock. Well, Antonio Davis likes what he sees from his daughter, Kayla. She has been in fuego from long range to three-point line. That's a grown woman right there. Kayla Davis. Picking a great time to have a career day for South Carolina. Yeah, it's been Kayla Davis day here in Stockton. Just so smooth. The pull-up jump shot off of the bounce. She's a catch-and-shoot three-point shooter. Looks so relaxed. Has taken shots within the flow of the offense at 6'2". She is so versatile. Very strong in the open court. She's a tough matchup for any team. And those numbers are exceptional. Five of six overall from three. Also five rebounds and three assists for Davis in 23 minutes. And that's the end of the third quarter. South Carolina one quarter away from Don Staley's second Elite Eight as the head coach in South Carolina. She'll talk with Molly McGrath if we come back.
beat South Carolina ahead of Quinnipiac in the second half. And I'm here with South Carolina's head coach, Don Staley, and coach Kayla Davis came out of the half firing five made three-pointers in this game. What is she doing well? Well, she's staying engaged. Well, we talked a little bit about just staying engaged. I thought we had some lulls in the first half uh, to where we need to tighten up. And I thought she tightened up and took what, what they gave her. 30 points in the paint. How do you like your activity inside? I like it. You know, you're, you're going to win a lot of basketball games when you, when you can control and dominate the paint. All right. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, you look at the numbers for Davis, Wilson, and Gray. Dawn Staley, one of the most respected players of all time, has become one of the most respected coaches in college basketball, so much so she's been named the head coach of USA Basketball for the women's national team. She has experience with the under-19 and under-18 teams as the head coach. She's now been a head coach for 17 years, was at Temple, and she was playing in the WNBA while she was coaching, which is remarkable to think the success she has as a coach while she's playing. And South Carolina had been to three Sweet, uh, sweet 16s prior to her arrival. They've now been to four in a row as that three-pointer falls for Gray. And they're about to make the Elite Eight for the second time in the Staley era. And not to mention leading the nation in attendance. And there are two factors that I think have really helped Dawn Staley elevate her profile, as you were saying, to one of the great coaches in college basketball. Number one is they had to work on their offense. They were a team that she, she didn't have great talent early on, so their defense got ahead of them. That's how they won games early on in her career. But in the last couple of years, we've seen her offensive adjustments. Uh, Melanie Balcom adding her to the stat app with her expertise has helped. But this is a team that now you have to guard, you know, everywhere on the floor. The other thing that, that I think Don has done a great job of is incorporating more talent you bring you get transfers like a kayla davis and alicia gray and there's an adjustment there's an adjustment when there's an injury to atlanta coach they still won the sec tournament without her so we're seeing her coaching at its best with some of the things that south carolina has endured this year shot clock violation and outside of stores connecticut columbia south carolina might be the best place right now in college basketball to watch a women's game. We that had crowd the other night oh, was awesome. It was amazing. amazing. Considering the men were playing an hour away, and they they were playing their second round game an hour from Columbia, yet there was that great turnout. Yeah, game Cop Nation is uh, it's a real deal, you know. And Dawn has been grassroots about the way she's built it in the community making contact with fans. She has helped them to believe, not only just in women's basketball, period, but and what could be done in Columbia. Jumper is good for Pablo Strohmane, sophomore from Latvia, so she'll be back for this Quinnipiac team, which is gonna have its uh, Cinderella run come to an end here in Stockton, down 33 in the fourth quarter. They trailed 16-0 to start the game, did not get a point. Still 2.51 on the clock. Played well in the second quarter, but outscored in the third quarter, 31-17. Levos Moore extends the lead now with a three-pointer. And a foul on uh, Quinnipiac, so an offensive foul called there. The NIT heads to New York for its final four. Semi-final action tips off Tuesday at 7 Eastern. CSU Bakersfield and Georgia Tech on ESPN. And watch ESPN. Visit NCAA.com, home for all 90 NCAA championships. They called that foul on McClure of the Bobcats with third personal foul. Herbert Harrigan can't knock it down. McClure with a rebound. South Carolina is starting to allow some of its subs to play, including Tiffany Davis, who's battled through a number of injuries uh, just to be on the floor. So a veteran player getting a chance to get some minutes here in the Sweet 16. Yeah, and every program has players that either injury derails your career. Nice move there from Tiny. Or maybe you just don't end up playing as much as you thought, but you're expected to show up every day in practice, be a factor, bring energy, help with the scout, whatever it is. And I don't think those players get enough recognition. Uh, they're behind the scenes. They're not hearing about them on the highlights, but they're doing valuable things as well. 
And she was one of the program foundations as Davis gets the basket and the foul right on cue. And recruited to help the South Carolina program take the next step. And the bench excited to see her make a move. Just takes a baseline. Good finish there. And it's good to see her team support her because she does a lot of encouraging and picking up of this team day in and day out. Cuevas more to the bench. South Carolina 17 of 18 at the line tonight. So just one missed free throw. They were perfect at halftime. There have been two times in the NCAA Women's Championship where a team was perfect at the free throw line for an entire game. Texas in 2014, Kansas State in 2008, and Lori Bauman of Drake back in 1982 was 16 of 16. Well, well, Don Staley said being engaged. That's one way that in March you really have to be engaged. You know, you got to be able to get to the free throw line, knock down easy ones. Regardless of how the game is going, that is something that you have to be able to do night in and night out. Herbert Harrigan swaps that one. Artucci comes back and misses. Well, they won their first round game by 50, and they're up 41 here in the Sweet 16. And again, Quinnipiac won in Miami. Scored 85 points in that game, made 15 threes. And also beat Marquette in the first round. This is the farthest they've ever been, and only the fourth time. A 12 seed has made it to the regional semi. And one number you point at, looking at the box scores, assists. The Bobcats have... Oh. Everything's going in. One on the timer. Davis has to throw it up and paint some three. <laughs> oh, Davis. But the Bobcats had 44 assists between their first and second round games. And they have only, last break, they only had eight assists. So it's just been a struggle to get any offensive flow. And credit the Gamecocks. And now nine assists on the night. But a much different story because of that defense. South Carolina taking Quinnipiac out of its game. And they did that right at the start. You wonder, too, you know, the nerves of, of being this far and everybody talking about you. If that played a role at all in the slow start for the Bobcat. Yeah, because I think, okay, first and second round, there was no expectation. Sure. You know, it's like, okay, you win your first NCAA tournament game. Oh, wow, you won your second one. But then there becomes an expectation, right? Because you have performed well, and people are expecting you to hit shots. And, and I think it does change the energy some from a for a team. Artucci playing her final game in a Quinnipiac uniform. Richard Sr. has been part of three conference championships. Got a foul in South Carolina. 4.28 to go in this one. The NCAA Women's Championship is presented by the Quicksilver Card from Capital One. Earn unlimited 1.5% cash back. Every purchase, everywhere. Today's Capital One Cup Impact Performance, Kayla Davis has been tremendous. 9 of 13 shooting, 28 points. Most since early in the season, hit five threes, was in control throughout, didn't take a bad shot the entire game. He's just very even keel, doesn't get too high or too low. Showed a lot of poise in her decision making, the shots that she took. Didn't force anything inside out. Good balance. I mean, very good afternoon for her. And standing by with her dad, Antonio, had a lengthy NBA career as Molly McGrath. All right. Thank you so much, Dave. That's right. NBA veteran, but most importantly, father of Kayla Davis, Antonio Davis here and 28 points. How proud are you of your daughter and her performance on this stage? You know, just just excited for her, really. You know, it's kind of been an up and down year. You know, she's a kid that will do what you asked her to do. Uh, and I think sometimes it, it, it allowed her to question, you know, what she does and how she plays. And now I just see her out here just playing loose and playing the way that she's all, I've known her to play for so long and it's seemingly she's having fun. So that makes our heart happy. You've been her coach, her father, but in these moments, are you more coach or are you more dad when you're watching her play? <laughs> you know, I try to be more dad now, you know, she has enough coaches there on the bench and there's, although there's not a knowledge, knowledge negativity today 
uh, there are those times where, you know, her head is down and you just have to support her as much as possible. So I just try to always give her those positive moments. All right. Thank you so much for the time and congrats on all of Kayla's success. Thank you. I really appreciate it. All right, Dave, back to you. Antonio is from Oakland, which is about uh, an hour or so away from Stockton, where this uh, regional is being held. Yeah, I mean, you, you look at two of the young ladies we've talked about a lot and probably more in this game, but Asia Wilson and also Kayla Davis and just what their dads have meant to their career. Jumper won't fall for Martucci. Out of bounds to South Carolina. Well, the winner of our next game will face the Gamecocks. It'll be Florida State as Morgan Manns goes to the sideline. Obviously, emotional for her as a senior and all the seniors, given what this uh, program has accomplished. Yeah, she is from Southbury, Connecticut. And again, talked about the influence of the Connecticut Huskies on her career. She said she used to want to be Diana Tarazi. I said all of us wanted to be Tarazi. <laughs> but went to camps there and, um, you know, Coach Fabry said that there's not a player that's more caring for her teammates than Morgan Mann. She said if anyone needs a ride or, you know, wants something to eat, Morgan Mann is there always to, to comfort and to be a shoulder to lean on. So she is really had a, a big impact on this team, not just on the court, but just as a family. And now the patience, too, of, of Quinnipiac to allow Trisha Fabry the time to build this program and make the transition from Division II to Division I and make the NCAA tournament for the third time. Uh, this group, including Morgan Mance, has been able to have the experience of playing in an NCAA tournament in 2013 and 2015. And then also uh, get to the Sweet 16 this year, winning their first games and beating ranked teams for the first time in school history. Climbing from three, that's now 95 points for South Carolina. Well, and one thing, you know, Coach Fabry made some adjustments to their offense because of injury. They used to have what's called the gold rush, the five in, five out substitution. And she played that style a lot so everyone would feel involved, so everyone would feel valuable, so she could get as many players engaged in what was happening on the floor and they were so unselfish in buying into that and they wanted martucci to foul there so she can get the ovation have a chance to come out of the game and hug her coach martucci fifth year senior from waterford connecticut part of three conference championships she's a captain on this team She's their toughness. She actually redshirted because Coach Fabry said she needed her to bulk up a little bit, but she has been someone they can depend on night in and night out for her defensive prowess. She gets the assignment of the best offensive player night in and night out, and she'll definitely be missed on this team. Well, tonight at 11 p.m., catch Sports Center at night. Chris Hassel, Lisa Kearney, they'll break down the men's Elite Eight and Women's Sweet 16 game, plus NBA, NHL, NFL News, everything else. Sports Center at night. 11 o'clock tonight, Eastern Time. Well, turnover by South Carolina. All right, what do you make of the next game? Oregon State and Florida State coming up, winner to play South Carolina. Should be a fun one. I mean, Florida State's offense this season has been fantastic. They can put up a lot of points. They get out in transition. And Shakayla Thomas is one of the best athletes um, left still playing right now in the NCAA tournament. So she's a tough guard. But on the other end, Scott Ruick is a genius when it comes to game planning. He, his team is always ready on the defensive end. Can they slow down the offensive machine of the Florida State Seminoles? And will they get some of their outside shot back? You know, Sydney Wee so far in the NCAA tournament has not been great from outside, and they need that kind of balance on the offensive end to beat the Knowles. That was interesting, too. A lot of the Oregon State players were saying that all year Florida State was a, the type of team that they wanted to play. Or they're going to get their chance next year from Stockton and the winner will move on to the Elite Eight to play South Carolina. So the Gamecocks have survived one step uh, in their quest to return to the Final Four. The West Coast has been a problem for them as the three goes, but not today. Their one Final Four in the last four years came when they were in Greensboro. They weren't happy about being sent West again this year after going to Sioux Falls last year in Palo Alto a few years ago. But they handled this game very well. 
Florida State getting ready. The 2-3 matchup in the Stockton region coming up next. South Carolina started out the game on a 16 to nothing run. Herbert Harrigan gives South Carolina 100 points in a regional semifinal, a 44 point lead. Most points this season by the Gamecocks. Got a foul here. Free throws coming up with 8.3 on the clock. We have seen some strong performances from number one seeds. Yeah. When you look at the way that Baylor has played, UConn, Notre Dame, even without Brianna Turner. Boy, it's been some dominant performances. And it's been, what, once in the last four years, all, all the one seeds have made it to the Final Four, and that uh, was two years ago. So far, so good in 2017 for the ones. And a great run for Quinnipiac. Ran into a much better team, maybe a team that can challenge UConn. We'll see. 100 to 58, the final score. The Gamecocks advance to the Elite Eight for the second time in three years. In 2015, they made it all the way to the final four. Asia Wilson, a handful, 24 points, seven of nine for the floor, and made all 10 of her free throws. Kayla Davis had 28. Alicia Gray coming off a game in which she was injured, had 19 points, showed no signs of being banged up. South Carolina Monday night at 9 Eastern, six local here in Northern California will play either Oregon State or Florida State. A double-digit seed advancing on the top of the bracket with Oregon move on to play UConn in that regional final. Well, Molly just got done talking to Antonio Davis. Time to talk to Antonio's daughter, who was the star of the game, Kayla. That's right, Dave. Kayla, I just spoke with your dad. He is so happy with how loose and free you were playing out there. What was working for you? I'm um, just hitting a lot of shots. You know, I think right now it's, it's been a, a process to kind of, you know, get comfortable, um, you know, and get, and get in motion. But um, I don't know. We're, we're moving the ball well, shooting the ball well, and, you know, just knocking out open shots. Nearly 40 points in the paint for you guys. How encouraging is that dominance inside? Very, very. You know, obviously when you take away, a, you know, a piece of our inside game and, and we're so fine away to get points to the paint, that, you know, that means a lot to us. And, you know, it's encouraging moving forward. All right. Thanks. Congrats and good luck moving forward. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. An efficient night for Kayla Davis, 9 of 13 from the floor, 5 of 6 from three-point land, 28 points in a route as South Carolina moves on to the Elite Eight to face either Oregon State or Florida State. For LaChina Robinson, Molly McGrath, I'm Dave Pash. We'll see you in about a half an hour for the Seminoles and Oregon State. But right now we're going to send you back to the studio. Anne Maria Taylor.